While the whole of Iceland is unique, natural aspects of this island can strike a familiar chord with Americans. The mountains that might stand west of Denver, the hills that would fit into the heart of San Francisco, the bay water that could fill a quiet corner of the Boston Harbor. But the extent to which Iceland now uses these natural aspects, its glaciers, its rivers, its underground heat, all to generate electricity, that is something that is undeniably unfamiliar to the states. When I was growing up in Iceland, and into the 50s and the early 60s, over 80% of our energy came from imported oil and coal. Now, as you said, 100% of the electricity is from domestic clean energy resources, almost 100% of the heating of the houses. This uh, energy revolution that the world is looking for now, we have actually underwent that revolution in, in many aspects. Hydroelectricity provides the overwhelming majority of power generation here in Iceland, and Reykjavik Energy operates two hydro plants in the country, including this one behind me. It generates 3.8 megawatts of electricity every single year, the very same capacity it had when it first opened, all the way back in 1921. Uh, we are still tapping into hydro, and, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, there are uh, uh, we are seeing some similar developments right now as we did uh, in, uh, in the early days of, of, of hydroelectricity. There are, uh, there are farmers and landowners uh, uh, putting up small plants uh, for domestic use and, and uh, giving the rest or, or tapping the rest into the national grid. Hydro is a great energy, absolutely. I mean, it's the only way you can really store large amounts of energy. Okay, true hydroelectric power. It has also the big advantage of being able to put back into the network very quickly. Uh, the turbines just, you know, you flick the switch and the power comes on. And that is an absolute must, I'd say, uh, if you have other sources which are, like the renewables, intermittent. So wind power, for instance. If you can couple wind power with hydro, you really have it made. Iceland, though, has little room or need for the intermittent renewables Gauthier referred to, solar and wind. Already, virtually 100% of the country's electricity comes from carbon emission-free generation. The U.S. Energy Information Administration says in 2008, nearly three quarters of Iceland's electricity came from hydro generation, and geothermal sources accounted for almost all of the remaining quarter of generation. According to the EIA, that 24% is the highest percentage of geothermal generation in the entire world. And Iceland's power sector intends to grow that total in leaps and bounds. Hendasidi is the crown jewel in Reykjavik Energy's geothermal wing. Boreholes like these behind me will bring the generating plant's capacity up to 300 megawatts within the next two years. But the company isn't stopping there. Within this very region, the southwestern region of Iceland, the company has plans for two or three more geothermal generation plants, tapping into what it calls a virtually limitless domestic energy supply. Geothermal is interesting because there's both the, the current technology, the traditional technology, where you drill a well down to a pocket of steam or hot water, whether it's in Iceland or Northern California or several other places around the world, and you bring up that steam and make electricity. The issue, in fact, the opportunity really, is where else can you do geothermal where you don't have those pockets of steam and hot water? And that's where this newer technology called Enhanced Geothermal Systems, EGS, comes in. Essentially, that says, drill little, literally anywhere deep enough, you'll get to hot rock. There probably won't be water there, but if you can fracture the rock, put water down there, bring it back up, then you can make electricity. That technology is still in development, and it is that, uh, uh, that type of technology that, uh, for example, the United States are mainly uh, looking at because uh, uh, you have very advanced drilling technology, uh, given your history in, in, in uh, uh, tapping into fossil fuel resources, sure. uh, but uh, just a little shift of your focus in drilling and, uh, and uh, advancing uh, your technologies, you can use that resource. But even though Iceland's renewable resources are emission free, not to mention import free, they nonetheless come at some environmental cost. There are growing concerns, uh, environmental uh, concerns, regarding 
the uh, footprint, the environmental footprint, both of hydro and of geothermal. With the present technology, you know, there is not, I mean, there is not a public acceptance for doing that mm -hmm. because some of these high temperature geothermal systems are in beautiful areas and we want to preserve them for, you know, for future generations. We don't want to put wells into all these areas. I think the big case against hydro is really the damming of rivers uh, and creating reservoirs. I think that has been the traditional case. Uh, I mean, hydro has been built for many, many years. I mean, we know how to mitigate the environmental impacts of this today. So perhaps there's an Icelandic lesson as the U.S. Congress prepares to take up climate legislation again in the new year. Bills that would limit our country's carbon emissions and put a premium on domestic renewable resources. Bills that could mimic Iceland's approach and maximize the use of these natural resources across America. The United States is blessed with having enormous uh, resources of geothermal nature. And the MIT report that, which came out a few years ago estimated that given the present technology and the, uh, the skill to drill uh, down into the ground that we have today, it would be feasible to create geothermal uh, power production in America that would be uh, tantamount to twice the present electricity consumption in the United States. For me, it's become almost a, a moral mission to try to make America realize that this transformation is something which is not just urgently needed, but is also very good business, makes economic sense and is a fundamental pillar in American global competitiveness in the 21st century. In Reykjavik, Iceland, Tyler Suters, Clean Skies News.